Michelle, can I ask you to just stand, please, if you don't mind, next to Donna, just to give her mm. a hand for a second. Thank you. Now, what I'd like you to do, please, if you go to the second page on the 1st of June, 2016, having been through those accounts, it's right at the top on the second half of that page. You see? Thank you, Michelle. It says at the top that you've taken £50 out from the ATM, I'm confident it's been handed over, and you've provided a description of what the money's for. In other words, what you say, the overriding and underlying purpose of the loan is for. Can you please read out from reverse order? In other words, read from the right-hand side what the purpose of the loan is, starting with milk. Milk, tobacco, cat food, weed. Just pause. Weed? <laughs> yes, Judge. Were you doing some kind of gardening? <laughs> no, Judge. You weren't? No, Let's Judge. go to the 2nd of September 2016, please. Milk, tobacco, cat food, weed. Excellent. 4th of April 2016. Again, £30, get cash. What's that for? Weed. Weed. <laughs> and then the 5th of April 2016. Milk, tobacco, cat food, weed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle, for your help. Well, I get the milk. I presume you've got a cat. <laughs> <laughs> the tobacco, I thinly understand, if you want to smoke. But, sir, why are you buying gardening products? <laughs> it's drugs, cannabis. Yes. Right, Mum? Yeah. You went and bought some supplies, yes. as I understand it. And, naturally, everybody was going to share food, drink, essentials, toilet paper, I don't know, perhaps some deodorant, that sort of thing. In addition to that at the shop, what else did you acquire, Lewis? Uh, I purchased uh, a garden gnome. Um, the idea being, if you see that gazebo over there, I knew that when we're there for the whole month... Pause for a second. Hmm. It's a very important case. You know, I used to do international law at The Hague. I'm going to turn to look at the gazebo and ask you where you positioned your garden gnome. <clears throat> <laughs> now, if you can see the nearest corner of the gnome dome... Uh, what dome? <laughs> That, that would be the Gnome Dome judge. Um, if you see the nearest corner, uh, that's where he would normally I be. I never thought that I'd find myself trapped in the middle of such a horrendous sentence. Please would you step forward and point out the Gnome Dome? I will <laughs> make my way to the Gnome Dome. It's this. This here. That was, that was the Gnome Dome. Thank you very much for showing me around your Gnome Dome. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason it was called a gnome dome, sir, is that you had purchased a gnome. Correct. From where did you purchase said gnome? It was from a local supermarket. We did it as part of a bigger shop. How much? £20. Of your money? Yes. Not the shared kitty? No. And eventually he stood outside of the tent and became something of a mascot, correct? Correct. He became... I don't know, a symbol of fun and frolic and that sort of thing. And the subject of inspiration even for people's jokes. Yeah, I mean, I knew that we were there for a month and I knew that morale would fade. We're on a campsite, it's not the greatest situation. With a bunch of comedians. Well, yeah, because tears of a clown. So, when it would get sad, you always had that in the corner and he was always there for you, always smiling. What was his name? Nomez. <laughs> He would dispute that, but... Just pause. Yes, sir, you've, uh, you'd like to respond um, to the he... very important factual issue as to the name of the garden gnome. His gnome was actually Stephen, because... Um... Just pause. I just want to be clear. We have a very important difference of fact. You believe the gnome's name was... Gnomes. And you believe it was... Stephen. <laughs> Let's fast forward very quickly. At some point where Nomez or Stephen was on the campsite, originally there he is, like an homage, according to your complaint, to Heidi High, correct? Correct. Heidi High. Hi. Yes, like the old uh, 80s programme. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Only at some point you came back and something had happened to his little arm, waving. What had happened? It had broke clean off. I understand. So it went from Heidi High to Heidi Ho. <laughs> that would be correct. 
Let's pause for a second whilst I find out what Hayden did with Nomez or Stephen, who had gone from waving at everybody to quite literally camping. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Um, I believe that the gnome was left in a state like that for two days and I'm no doctor but if you were left without an arm for two days you were going to be in quite a state so I um, did what was right and put him out of his misery by stamping on his head. <laughs> I mean that, that was the reaction of my... <laughs> there were no glue in that. You stepped on an ornament that wasn't yours, correct? And that is the result of it. Why do you not owe this money? Well, I won the bet. Nothing would have happened if he just, you know, accepted his loss and we went our happy ways, essentially. Just pause for a second. You see, what happens is from time to time at Christmas, I have a little book of moron. <laughs> <coughs> and what I like to do is to write down legal defences, which are news to me. Yep. But just make me, you know, titter from time to time. And this is a new one for me. <laughs> I broke your television, and I wouldn't have done so, because had you paid me what you owed me, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have got so enraged, and consequently, I wouldn't have picked up the console and thrown it at the television. Consequently, therefore, it is your fault. Yeah, I know exactly... Just pause for a second. Yeah, <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> Amazing. Now, thank you very much. Your claim is for a new television to the tune of that receipt, yes? Uh, yes, indeed. Excellent. Nick, you have a counterclaim. I've just seen it. What's your counterclaim for, sir? £250. Mm. For the value of the bet. We had a gentleman's agreement, a gentleman's handshake. We paid many bets beforehand. You know, he's paid up, I've paid up. Don't know why this time. Do you believe that that bet to... is actionable in law? What there basis do you have? There must be something for it. Sorry? There must be something there for it. There must be something there for it. Yeah. Is it I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not personally that... That involved in, in the law side of things, but understand. you understand. Know, oh, well, it's make your... here's your lucky day. <laughs> it's make your decision. Well, I do. <laughs> Pavan, you got Nick very angry. Based on what your father says, yes, even though you're a hard working person, you need to spend jolly less time on this console, it seems to me. Morally speaking, certainly if Nick hadn't broken the television, you probably should pay up. However, Nick, I turn to your counterclaim first, it's not an enforceable debt because there was no intention to create legal relations in a bet of that kind. Be quiet, I don't need your cricket clap. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, it's not enforceable. The reason being that at the time you entered into that agreement, parties did not believe that you would take each other to court in the event that he didn't pay that £250. Consequently, I dismiss your claim. That's the law. However, Nick, you acted in a way which was entirely rash and unreasonable, and you had a duty of care not to do that. You are responsible, I'm afraid to say, for the full value of the new television. This was an expensive game of FIFA. This court awards you £1,068.30. What about myself, Your Honour? Which bit of the law did you not understand? Let me help you. <laughs> we had a, we had a no. handshake. Pavan won his case and was awarded the full amount of his claim. Now, you've got a counterclaim today. Can you tell me what that's for, please? Um, it's for tobacco costs. Let's just pause for a second. I want you to think deeply and carefully before you submit to me that I should consider a counterclaim for tobacco. Bearing in mind I've got children in a house. Bearing in mind children in a house with nowhere appropriate to sleep. You seriously want me to consider a counterclaim for tobacco costs. Just look at my face. <laughs> I was spending £40 out my child tax every week for fags for her. My daughter had to go without. And that's an admission that you make as part of your submission? <laughs> Was that the smartest thing that you've done today? You want me, a judge, to be persuaded by your submission that you were taking food out of your, child, your child's mouth to pay for your friend's fags, and I'm supposed to go, oh, you poor thing, do have the money back? No. Got about as much chance as she has in recovering those hair extensions. You're claiming for money that you say 
Sarah owes you. What money does Sarah owe you? I had Sky uh, thinking that Sarah was going to be homo. I never heard from Sarah for a while again, so uh, I spent out on dog food, more Sorry, collars. You saw a Facebook page. You acknowledged that. On that Facebook page, Sarah was offering to rehouse the dog and sell the dog for value. Did you advertise a cost on the Facebook page? How much it was going to cost? Did you say you were selling her? Yes, I was selling her, yes. So what made you think when she said she was selling the dog that she was only temporarily giving it away? Did you think that she was lending out a husky on a rental? No, Judge. Perhaps people wanted to take pictures of it. Perhaps it was around Christmas time. People could dress up in a little red hat and that would be a little charming postcard for the family. <laughs> no, Is that what you thought? No, I thought, being a decent person, I would keep the dog in my care until Sarah had sold the dog on because it was affecting her family. So you were going to do sort of doggy foster care? Basically, yes. Yeah. Basically. Conversation of that kind? Never. I see. Now, Blake, how much exactly does Sarah owe you and why? Uh, dog food bowls, collars... Um... Dog food bowls? Why does she owe you for a dog food bowl? Because I never received them when I took the dog back. In other words, the agreement wasn't just for the value of the dog, right? right. The agreement that you say you never had. It was also for all of the accoutrements. That means the things yeah. that go with the dog. I couldn't look after Did you advertise them as well? Part of the part of the thing. It was a given that those went with her. Did you give her all of the? Did you give yes. her? What did you say you never had? Dog food bowls, toys, collars. Dog food bowls. I'm writing down in big. Okay. Food bowls. Toys. Toys. Collars. Collars. Any diamonds on it? <laughs> what else? Food. Food. Because it wasn't cheap food that she had. No, so. only had expensive food. Yeah. I see. So what exactly are you suing for? I've noticed that there's various parts of it. I'm going to help you. It may surprise some people. You're suing for £929. I've got £40 a week for food for 20 weeks. Yes. Why do you say that that's Sarah's responsibility? Because I had it in my head that I was literally looking after the dog until she'd sold the dog on to somebody else. Such a shame you didn't keep it there. I know. In your head. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's look at your counterclaim. You say that you have various costs as a result of what's happened, correct? Yeah. Tell me, there's a... £70 for a replacement tyre bought for his car. Well, yeah, when he first gave me the car, I had to get one of the rear wheels uh, redone. So I just got that done so I could continue Did you drive, drive it? it? Yeah. Did you have free freedom to drive it? Yeah. Did the fact that you put a new tyre in it make it safe? Yeah. So why is he responsible for the £70? Bearing in mind that if you carry on with that part of the claim, it's going to be very stupid. Well, yes, if, if it's his car, then it's his responsibility, isn't it? What's the next part? Please tell me you're not pursuing this. What's the £60 for? Uh, well, but the, day, the day before he took it back, I filled it full of petrol. And then the next day he turns up in the morning and says he wants it back. You're charging him for the petrol that was in the car? Well, if it's a full tank, yeah. If he wants it all back and everything. And... Hang on. I've just seen the last part of your claim. I must have missed it. Sometimes it's like a speed bump. My brain jumps over these little... There was a little moron bumps. <laughs> What's the £240 you're claiming well, for? Because he took that car off me and I didn't have a car, I was then having to car share with my wife, driving her uh, and everywhere, so I was having to double run everything because I didn't have a car on my own. So you're, what's the £240 for? For the excess petrol, it'd have cost me and uh, wear and tear on my other vehicle, it'd have cost me to pick my wife up and take everyone around in my car. That... Is he serious? Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Don't be stupid. Stay and watch the best judgment of moments. And I'm talking. Understood? Don't be a moron. Subscribe to Judge Rinder YouTube channel. Right now. That's an order.